hope this top is not see-through. We shall see in the final edit, shan't we? Today, we're going to talk about my favorite topic ever. We're gonna to talk about, we're gonna talk about old people. Specifically, we're going to talk about grandmothers, the coastal grandmother aesthetic. My name is Teresa and this is Coastal Grandmother. So as I get older and truth be told, I feel like I'm aging rapidly and in the blink of an eye, I will be geriatric, a senior citizen. I found a strand of white hair on my head when I was 16 and that strand has multiplied, folks. That strand has multiplied. My knees are starting to creak. Aging is happening for me. I can't stop it. As I get older, I like to think about what I will wear when I am 50 years old, when I'm 60, 70. Granted that I live that long. I, I did make a pack a long time ago with one of my friends that by the time we turned 50, she was going to, um, she was going to end me wherever I may be, wherever I am. She was going to, she was going to end, she was going to end this. And, um, now I kind of want to take it back. Part of the pack was no take backs. So I'm kidding. I'm not actually kidding. So I'm what you would call a very prepared person. And I like to think about what I would wear on vacation. I like to have a whole aesthetic going on, but I would also like to put together a lookbook when I am an old woman. And it really matters to me that I look fashionable when I am 70 years old. Because one day I went to the movies and I saw this elderly lady and she was like goals. She was wearing a very simple outfit, a minimal black sweater, jeans. They were somewhere between skinny and straight leg, Converse sneakers. And she had kind of like that shorter, the shorter hair, but it was kind of shaved on one side, a blue streak. And she was the coolest older lady that I've ever seen. So one thing you have to know about me is that I, um, I like watching old people. I know that's weird. I like to consider myself an anthropologist. I like to people watch and one of the type of people that I love to watch are old people. I like to see what they do. I like to see how they how they move or can't move. And I like to take notes, field notes in my mind about how I would be when I am older. And then sometimes, sometimes I look at pictures of myself that my husband takes of me and I can see the old lady I'm going to be. And sometimes I look at my friends and I can see the old ladies they will grow into be. So I kind of straddle the line between trying to hold back time as long as possible because I do like being young and I'm sure society loves the young, but at the same time, I uh, just want to get it over with. I just want to be an old lady already and be able to say what I want, do what I want. I'm not looking forward to menopause, but at the same time, I will be past my childbearing years and then my ovaries will be my own again. I want to be that quirky older lady who says whatever the hell I want. Maybe I'll take up drinking. Maybe I might smoke a few, a few joints. Once you're old, the filter comes off and it's time to party. It's time to take off that bra and swing your old lady tatas and pray that they don't hit you in the face. Which brings us to the point of this video, the coastal grandmother aesthetic that has been blowing up on TikTok right now. And depending on when I publish this video, it's probably old news, but whatever, I don't care. Coastal grandma aesthetic coined by user at Lexi Nicoletta is a laid back fresh from the garden aesthetic. There's only one person that comes to mind when I think about coastal grandma, Diane Keaton in Something's Gotta Give. All white outfit, turtleneck, wraps. Maybe she had a straw visor, I don't know. She's put together yet comfortable. She has a grand beach house in what I presume to be the Hamptons. It's probably been 20 years since I've seen that movie. If I recall, she was a playwright. Am I wrong? It's like I'm a psychic here. She's put together, but in a comfortable way. You gotta be comfortable as a coastal grandma and she has it going on. This Nancy Myers film was a very breakthrough, revolutionary idea in the early 2000s that a successful woman in her 50s can enjoy the finer things in life, can have a very active love life without, without her husband, without a man, a single woman alone in her Hamptons beach house. Those are goals, guys. Those are goals. So we are going to dive deep, but not that deep because 
because the coastal grandma aesthetic, it ain't that deep. We're gonna freestyle. I will draw what I can from my memory. And hopefully I have two brain cells to rub together. And my brain cells, unlike my ovaries, are not decrepit. By the way, my ovaries are decrepit. They're still on the shelf. They, they haven't passed their expiration date yet, but it's getting there. The biological clock is ticking, has been ticking, but I think it's actually ticked its last talk. But who knows? There could be surprises. Will I be a grandmother in my in my old age? Who knows? But it's very important, says Lexi Nicoletta. You don't have to be a grandmother to adopt the coastal grandmother aesthetic. You don't even have to be old. Raise your hand if you have a grandmother who has a beach house, because if you do, I envy you. I hate you. I hate you because I can't be you. Beachfront property is that's when you know if you made it, you may inherit this beachfront property and then you have so much generational wealth. Someone like me, <sighs> remember that movie, Grey Gardens, Little Edie and her mother, Big Edie, cousins to Jackie Kennedy. They weren't exactly dressed like the coastal grandmothers, but damn it, they owned a beach house, beach house in the Hamptons. Oh, the coastal grandmother's outfit is always classical, elegant, pulled together with neutral shades. We're talking white camel, that light camel, beige, navy, crisp, clean, a nod to old money. It is not gaudy. Your coastal grandmother is not one of those aging Barbie women. She would not have any kind of logos on her person. She wouldn't have like a tight hot pink shirt over her double Ds that says, Bibby in rhinestone. No, no, no. She would wear a crisp white button down. Freshly laundered, freshly ironed. There's no wrinkle on your coastal grandmother. <laughs> If you consider the minimalist capsule wardrobe that was so popular a couple of years ago, interchange the blacks, the browns, the dark colors. Of course, she she can wear black and brown. That's for nighttime. Change that out for a softer neutral color. Camel. All shades of camel. Camel, that's what we want. Camel and white and creams and ivory. Those are the colors that your coastal grandmother is drawn to. The coastal grandmother is, as I've said, she is a minimalist, but old. That's really my aspiration. Somewhere in the coastal grandmother's closet, there is a boat neck three-quartered sleeve top, and the hem would be of a sensible length. She's not gonna wear a crop top. At the corners, it would look kind of like V out like this. You know what I'm talking about, or maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. If you've ever set foot in a Dillard's or a Talbot's or a Chico's, I have set foot in a Talbot's because I saw some shoes that were actually kind of youthful, and I went in there and they didn't have them, but I looked around and I'm like, grandmother. We've established the Chris button-down collared shirt in white linen or cotton or poppin, but never polyester because we want breathable fabrics here. She likes natural breathable fabric. She has silk. Maybe she'll have a silk pillowcase so that she won't crinkle up her hair, a side sleeper or tummy sleeper. She won't wrinkle up her face. The coastal grandmother in my book is drawn to that curvy dress shirt tail. I don't know why, but I see that a lot at the, uh, at the loft at Ann Taylor Lofts, which is another store that she frequents, by the way, depending on how rich your coastal grandmother is. Did she just buy that beach house right now during the housing bubble? She's pretty freaking rich. But if she bought that house in the 70s, then that house is appropriately priced. She's still rich. This is my knowledge of, um, of real estate right now. A beach house has always been more expensive than your average suburban post-war track home. And I'm talking about California. I don't know about other places. In the 70s, is probably like 400,000, 500,000 at most. And what you would get is, is like a beach bungalow. If she is a coastal grandmother that currently purchased a house on Newport in Malibu, Balboa, she is rich. Just know that I, I hate you. I hate you out of envy. It's nothing personal. It's just envy. Just green with envy because of your generational wealth. So unfair. <laughs> get beyond the fact that I said that I loathe you with all my heart and tell your grandmother to adopt me for 
God's sake, guys. It's literally taking me like 20 minutes to talk about a collared button down. I don't know where my mind is. It's the first day of that time of the month, which your coastal grandmother doesn't really have to worry about because she is past her childbearing years. She is deep into menopause and she's enjoying it. She is conquering menopause because, because of the beach breeze. The beach breeze that is fluttering through her spacious oceanside condo. She owns spectacular real estate. And the reason I'm um, fluttering, I'm not on menopause, I don't think, but it's just really hot here. And the shirt is made of polyester and these lights are hot. It's like I'm under a police interrogation lamp right now. She likes to wear white pants, white jeans, not skinny jeans, straight leg jeans, or she is very fond of a billowy linen wide leg. That's one thing we must keep in mind as we get older is that we don't really like tighter clothing. Life's too short to constrict your body. And she owns a couple of espadrilles. She owns the flat espadrilles, the wedge espadrilles, but she also enjoys a, um, a canvas sneaker. She heads probably harking back to her youth in the 50s as a young girl in a poodle skirt with Keds. She likes a Superga sneaker. She likes a Spiri Topsider boat shoes. Boat shoes are very popular with your grandmother. And like Diane Keaton, she has a turtleneck and she has a wide brim straw hat because she does maintain a very strict skincare regime, but she could also own a straw visor. Being Asian, a visor is in my future. I can see it now. There's a, there's a lot of correlation between the coastal grandmother and the Asian mom aesthetic, whereas the Asian mom and Asian grandmother might pick up their visor from Daiso. If you're a crazy rich Asian, you might pick up up your visor from Prada that had the $500 visor or Gucci. You might pick one of those up. It looks pretty similar to a visor that you could pick up at the grocery store, Daiso. The coastal grandmother, she has a straw visor. With me, a, a visor can go either way. I feel like you need a license to wear this visor when you're Asian. It could look real chic or it could look real fobby. The coastal grandmother is also a fan of the shirt dress, but I feel like at this point, she's beyond dresses. She likes her flowy pants. You can, you can stroll down the beach and gather some sea grass, pompous grass for your decor. They're good for yachting. And to also slip on to go to a nice dinner where you will no doubt dine on scallops. She enjoys eating shellfish with some kind of white wine. Of course, she would have accessories, a wicker tote or a wicker satchel, any kind of wicker basket or gathering of the pompous grass, of the pompous grass. She likes a dainty gold necklace, a dainty gold or diamond encrusted tennis bracelet. Like her accessories are not bam in your face. They're very, they're very classy. They're probably heirlooms from her first husband who's dead or it was like a friendly divorce. I see her as a friendly divorce type of woman, irreconcilable difference type of woman. She's probably a wealthy widow or a wealthy divorcee. She obviously, she runs her own company, Diane Keaton and something's gotta give was an acclaimed playwright. She is in no hurry to marry. She's done with marriage. She is enjoying her single, widowed, or divorcee life. She enjoys a nice get together with her grown up children. At times she would play with her, her grandchildren, or she may not have grandchildren, whatever. Grandchildren are irrelevant in the coastal grandmother aesthetic because it's not about the children. It's about the woman and her clothes and her lifestyle. I can also see her in pastels. I can see her in a nice lavender and also a canary yellow. I've seen Oprah in a lot of canary yellow and Oprah is another example of a coastal grandmother. It got too hot to handle, so I put my hair up in a ponytail. I usually don't like doing that because my hair in a ponytail really pulls at my scalp and gives me a violent headache. This neckline is kind of grandmother-esque. So I'm already there. I'm already at the coastal grandmother look. So let us talk about what the coastal grandmother likes to do, what she likes to partake in during her retirement. She loves herself some Ina Garten barefoot Contessa. You would usually catch her cooking up Ina's rotisserie chicken recipe with a cable knit sweater tied around her shoulder. She likes to take long sunset walks down the beach. 
church. In a button down and a woven hat, the man's button down shirt and pair it with boyfriend jeans or or just his jeans and uh, steal down to dinner. The coastal grandmother has a very green thumb. She would grow peonies, heirloom tomatoes, but she would not call them tomatoes. She would call them tomatoes. She's great with herb. Luck the fresh basil from her herb garden and sprinkle it in her pasta. Whatever Martha Stewart was doing, she would do it too. Would she be into insider trading like Martha Stewart? They all are. Or how else will she afford this beach house? Perhaps her late or ex-husband was. Maybe she's single because her husband's in jail. It says here that she likes to use exclusive Le Lebo laundry detergent. I don't know what that is. I'm a Tide girl. She may live on the beach, but she's thrifty. Like, Martha is thrifty. She wouldn't spend money just for the sake of spending money. She would have the Mrs. Meyer laundry detergent in a spring lemon, and then she would have that in concentrate, and you just add water. Or she would have the Target version, Everspring. She would have the Method hand soap. And because she's thrifty, she would probably reuse that soap dispenser. She is a recycler, your grandma. But for aesthetics, I would also see her as buying that apothecary, the apothecary type bottles that you would probably get on Amazon. She is a fan of a peonies in the garden. She would have a nice rose garden. And she is definitely a fan of a hydrangea bush. Those hydrangeas outside those clap. Board, Cape Cod houses. That's her jam. I mean, she is a fan of that hydrangea bush. She cultivates it. I don't know how you cultivate a hydrangea bush. I've killed every single plant I've ever laid my hands on. I am no plant mom. I'm a plant killer. But your coastal grandmother, she is a plant lover. She doesn't mess with your monsteras, donkey tails, or your string of hearts, or whatever the millennial plants are. She is a hydrangea woman. She's a hydrangea cultivator. I see her as as a fixture at Martha's Vineyard or Cape Cod. I see her as a very Jackie Kennedy Onassis type woman. She is always dressed very comfortably, but very elegantly. She has big old sunglasses. Let me tell you, if you don't have sunglasses, you're going to start squinting. And when you start squinting, you get the crow's feet. She doesn't want that. She is avoiding that. So she has the big sunglasses and she would also have the Jackie O signature movie star scarf. And I see her as a very seasoned hostess. She has her pitcher of iced tea. She has a great selection of wine. She always opens up a bottle of wine before 4 p.m. Actually, if she opens up before 4 p.m., that would mean that she might have a problem. She would open up a nice bottle of chilled white wine, a cabinet sablag, with her Ina Garten rotisserie chicken meal. Your coastal grandmother loves wine. She is a wine connoisseur. She's borderline sommelier. She would drop in to Total Wine to pick up a bottle, but I don't think she would do anything that plebeian. So I think that she would drop into a fancy grocery store. I can only speak for the West Coast. These are our fancy grocery stores. We have Whole Foods, Bristol Farms, Gelson's, none of which that I shop at. I'm an Albertsons girl. I'm a Stater Brothers girl. And I'm definitely a Costco fiend. Of course, I think if it were available, she would definitely have a Costco membership. She would not just have a Costco membership. She would have an executive Costco membership. You know, the black card. That's what we're talking about here. She would also indulge in these expensive supermarkets in the um, Southern California area, the most expensive grocery market I can think of is where Gwyneth Paltrow shop, Year One. The coastal grandmother is more of like an East Coast preppy look to me. Very Nantucket, very Martha's Vineyard, Vineyard Vines. But on the West Coast, our coastal grandmothers look different. They don't really wear a lot of nautical stripes. I don't think we sail a lot here, but we do have a lot of bohemian coastal grandmothers. The Laguna Beach artist, the Pelican Hill, the New Newport Beach, Dana Point. They like a nice gauzy shawl. They're usually blonde. They favor a nice corkscrew curl. In Malibu, I think a lot of them are vegans. They like a California coastal decor. What is that? It's a lot of white. You got the flowy white curtain 
curtain, these blue pillows, maybe it has an anchor on them. I see her owning a restoration hardware cloud couch. Oh yes, oh yes, she has one of those. She has a, a big old coffee table. You better believe she has a floral arrangement, a hydrangea floral arrangement. You better believe she has a basket of fruits in her kitchen that she proudly displays those heirloom tomatoes that she either grows herself or buys fresh from the farmer's market. She puts her pasta in those clear containers. She organizes her pastas. She does not own a black refrigerator. She doesn't own a white refrigerator. She owns a stainless steel refrigerator. She might even have that little segment in the refrigerator that you could see through. That's like the fanciest refrigerator. She definitely has some breezy curtains, some billowy white breezy breezy curtains. Somewhere in her house there is a sailor's knot. Maybe she has a painting of a sailor's knot, a sculpture of a knot. She definitely has some maritime nautical-esque paintings of a ship, shipyard scenes, a ship in the middle of a storm. And she probably has some wooden carvings of a seagull, a pelican, some kind of seabird, which I think is just a seagull. I don't know. I hate birds. I have a profound fear of birds. But speaking of this knot that she owns, it's probably resting either her mantelpiece or a bookshelf. She definitely has books. She's very well read. I don't know if she's actually read all the books in her library. In fact, I don't know if anybody's really actually read all the books in their library. You ever see those architectural digests, interior photos of somebody's very envious library? I wonder if they've read all those books. Sometimes I wonder if people read. <laughs> Contrary to what my bookshelf tells you I am a I'm a reader. I read books from the library. I read ebooks mostly nowadays. I love books, but I don't like to feel books. I know that's blasphemy to the book community. I don't like to feel them. I don't really like to own them. They take up space. Books to me are kind of like a flex. Like you have a huge library. Yes, it informs the guests of your personality, how intellectual you are, how well read you are, but I know how well read I am. I don't need to tell people that I'm smart. In fact, I like to tell people I'm really stupid. The coastal grandmother. I see her hosting a very lively clam bake, if you know what I mean. Why did I say it like that? Why do I think the clam bake is a front for something? It's just a simple clam bake. What is a clam bake? I don't know. <laughs> you go out and then you, uh, you dig up some clams and then you bake them. You wade out into the water in New England, scoop up some clams from the sand, and then you shuck them. Do you shuck clams or do you shuck oysters? I don't know if you shuck them yourself. I guess if you're rich enough, you can hire a professional shucker to deal with your shellfish. The coastal grandmother, Jackie O, she would definitely have in her little black book the name of a professional oyster slash clam shucker. Her guests wouldn't have to shuck their own shellfish, if you know what I mean. And I didn't mean that, like, that's also a front for something. It's not, it's just, they're just eating shellfish here. Shucking. Shucking's a funny word. How did I get here? Where am I? I've let my hair down. I also envision your coastal grandmother to own a jute rug. And I see her as owning a lot of maritime oil paintings, maybe some impressionist paintings, but overall they're a little bland. She may own a few modern art pieces. They're subdued modern art pieces, like a circle, a square, maybe a picture of an oyster shucker. Your coastal grandmother, she's well-traveled. I see her as going to Monaco. Am I wrong? Probably has a lot of maps in her office. Maps with like little thumbtacks pinned to the places that she's traveled. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I see her as owning not one, but two, maybe a few items of chinwasserie. Chinwasserie is Asian art. She likes chinwasserie. Maybe it's her generation or something. She owns a Ming vase, a variety of um, blue and white, Danish, Delf? Is it called Delf? Yes. Delf pottery. Danish Delf pottery, which is also very Chinese. So she owns that. She probably owns a vase. She probably has a complete china set. Hold on to her mother or grandmother's silverware, which she, she probably never uses. Nobody really uses silverware nowadays. Or do they? Do you? During this clam bake that I'm apparently obsessed with, there is corn on a cob. I see her as scraping off the kernels of corn. There's really bad table manners in her book, that is, to just nibble on, 
on corn on a cob. So she would kind of like scrape off the kernels and mix it up with the drawn butter. Maybe she would have her professional shucker. In addition to shucking your shellfish, they would also scrape off the kernels. I don't know why I'm talking so much about this clam bake. I just think it's a funny word, clam bake. I've never been invited to a clam bake. So if you are the proprietor of a New England clam bake, please extend your invitation to me so I could really see what's going on here. Is there a professional shucker at a clam bake? How many oysters and clams does he shuck? Wait a minute, I just had a revelation. I don't think you shuck clams because clams open up as you heat them. So I'm completely wrong. You don't shuck the clams, you kind of heat them up and they open up for you, but you do shuck the oysters. How can you have a clam bake without oysters? You know what I'm saying? What do we get out of this? I hope you got something out of this. I hope you got something educational. I hope you got something fun. I hope I opened your eyes to, to clam bakes and oyster shuckers. So let me know. Let me know, just let me know. Drop a grandma down below if you made it this far. Let me know if you've ever attended a clam bake. Let me know if you wanna invite me to your clam bake. I would try to conduct myself in a civilized way. I am very excited about attending a clam bake, if you know what I mean. It's very literal, I just wanna go to a clam bake. There's no underlying messages here. Guys, I don't know why every time I mention a clam bake and every time I mention oyster shucking, I go, if you know what I mean, I don't mean anything. I don't know why I get all winky when I talk about anything associated with a clam bake. Why do I do that? This is why I probably can't pass like a lie detector test because I seem guilty even when I'm not guilty. People in real life think I'm giving them some kind of mixed messages, like I'm winking at them or like, if you know what I mean. Somebody help me. What do you envision yourself to look like when you're 60? And what kind of wardrobe do you wanna wear? Do you wanna do coastal grandma? Do you want to keep on keeping on with what you're wearing now? What do you wanna do? For me, I like the coastal grandma look, but I'm not going to fully embrace it because it's a lot of white, white clothes, that is. And I honestly can't keep anything clean. My aspiration would be a Koss grandmother. The store Koss, a Japanese minimalist, futuristic grandmother with touches of coastal grandma. That makes absolutely no sense, but I know what I'm doing here, or do I? Anyways, you know what to do. Smash that like button, reply in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see ya, and I'll see you next time. I didn't mean to make that sound like a come on either. I totally forgot my lighting. Oh shit. <laughs>